What's up, YouTube students? Welcome back, welcome back to today's second mail class. Um, hopefully you guys caught the first class last week. It'll be held every Wednesday. If you haven't go checked it out, go check it out. Last week we talked about different utensils, how to hold it, and we talked about working on your wrists and also working on your consistency with your acrylic powder, okay? There is a lot of um, back and forth and they are correct okay you will have to go to school if you want to get your license you will have to go to school and you will have to take courses and learn a lot of um in and outs about sanitation and a lot of other materials about nails that i will not be teaching you i am not a teacher and i will not teach you things that will pass for state board i am literally teaching you how to do nails in real life so please don't expect that from me um, another thing, um, it was a lot of argument and attacks on me about MMA, okay? In the video, I never once, you know, promoted MMA and told y'all to go and use it. I told you guys to go find the liquid that you like, you know, try different ones, try your consistency, see which one you like, and go for it. I never forced MMA down anybody's throat. I simply spoke for myself that... MMA is what I have been using for 14 years that I have no problem with. I chose it because I like it. I like the consistency. I like how it dries. And yeah, I spoke for myself. Um, they are correct. MMA is, like I said, is, it is illegal in many states. And you cannot take it to say, board. oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, and they are correct about that. But I lived in Maryland and I have access to it. I live in Georgia where I have access to, it, access to it, and I live in California where I have access to it. And it really saddens me that people have so much to say about it that have never used it before. And you just go off of what society tells you, and you go off of Google. It's so sad. I am walking proof that there is nothing wrong with it. I've been using MMA for 14 years, and we don't use it because it's cheap. Like, even when I was in the Asian nail salons, and they would be like, um, you know, use this. It dries better. It works better. Not because it's cheap, because it dries quicker, you know? And we would have EMA in the back for pink and white. Because, you know, pink and white, you need more time for it to dry so you can do the cut, okay? I never get into it with the nail industry people. Like, I literally mind my business. I make videos of nails and I literally just post it. I don't talk about explaining what I'm doing. I don't get into it with all, a lot of other nail techs because I don't like how y'all roll, you know? It's annoying. It's re Y'all really annoying. This is not everybody, but this is for a majority of nail techs that I do here. It's always, oh, what you're doing better than the other person or your product is better, da 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 da. I grew up learning nails in a nail shop, in an Asian nail shop. So it annoys me to hear when nail techs be like, um, stop going to the chop shop, stop going to them Asians and they be using the cheap products on you and come to me because I use better products. I use uh, more expensive products and I'm better and da da da. Like you don't have to bring another person down or another community down to prove that you're a good nail tech. If you're a good nail tech, your work should show on its own. Your worth ethic, your customer, your money, your income, all that should show on your own. You don't have to bring another set of people down to prove that you are better. I make jokes all the time. I do little ling ling skin. Ew, honey, who do your nails so ugly? Let me do for you. But I never once sit down and be like, oh, don't go to them because they do it like this or they do it like that. Because a lot of these people in the Asian shops, they're really good nail techs. And I've learned from a lot of good nail techs that have taught me so much. And it's not fair to them because they are very unproblematic. They don't talk about it. They don't be on Instagram. They don't even get the, the work that they deserve. Because there are some really good nail techs and they don't have Instagram. They don't have TikTok. They don't have Snapchat. They don't have Facebook. They don't do social media. They don't get to expand their work. But there are some good workers, good nail techs out here. Okay? So don't ever be that nail tech, please, that try to put other people down so that you can look better. Because that shit is whack. Okay, and um, I don't know if I just said it, but yeah, in the video, I never forced anybody. I never promoted it and say that it 
that you should go out here and purchase it now. No, I don't want you to get in trouble. I don't want you to get fined for it. I'm just being real with you, what I use, period. That's it. This is what I like. Can't nobody tell me that I can't like or I can't use what I've been using, okay? Um, I have a very good comparison for it, okay? I feel like MMA is treated like pit bulls and marijuana in America. Why? Because pit bulls and marijuana is illegal in a lot of states. And people still smoke and people still have pits. Now, pits on all pits are not bad dogs. It's how the owner trained them or raised them, you know, for them to go wild or whatever it is. We have different effect on everybody. People enjoy it. Some people use it to cope with their health. So... It is such a society look at things and make certain things illegal. That's not, that's not fucking fair, you know? And it's, I, don't, I feel the same way with MMA. I've been using it for 14 years. I never had no problems, okay? Like I said before, if the nail tech do a bad job, then your nails are going to lift. I see people sending like Google like, screenshots to me. So about, oh, this is what happens, da 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 the whole nail fell off. The only time my nail has ever fell off where the whole thing left is when I punched somebody in their face. It's when I get in a fight. And that's the only time that my whole nail fell off. If you your skill is not good, of course it's going to have lift. It's going to have fungus. If the client don't take care of their nails and they get lifts and they, they're constantly in the water without taking it off and just gluing it back on or taping it back on, of course those things are going to happen. But for me to sit up here and tell you guys that Oh, it's such a bad product. No, I'm not going to do that because I don't have a problem with it. You know, so for you, those of you who never use MMA products and just claim that y'all know so much and how bad it is, shut the fuck up because you never used it. You never used it. I am walking person that used it for 14 years and I have no problems at all. So, I'm all, oh, it takes too long to soak. That's not true. That's not true at all. Because you file the gel off, you soak it in acetone, put a little hot water bowl underneath so to keep it warm, soak off real fast. That's nothing wrong with it. It stink, not to me, not come at all compared to some of other shit that I have smelled, not even. So it's just so many people have opinions on something that they don't know that is so irritating, okay? But I never once said, I never promoted it for anybody to use. I'm speaking on my experience and I have every right to tell you my experience and what I like. You can't control me and you can't bully me to anything. Another thing, um, so just because it means illegal does not mean it's bad, okay? Another thing that doesn't make sense to me. So you are telling me that MMA is safe for dentists to use on your teeth on your teeth where you are actually tasting, swallowing, and it's in your mouth. It's safe for dentistry in your mouth, but it's not safe for the surface of your nails. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> you guys don't want to get in trouble either. So um, go check out EMA products. They are good. A lot of nail techs use it. They love it. It's, uh, it's legal. You can't get in trouble. So my advice is to don't be like Mimi. Don't be the rebellious one. <laughs> Go get the EMA and practice on your consistency with that. Um, I just been using this for a long time and that's all I, that I know. You know, I have tried to switch over to use other uh, EMA products. I, I just, I just can't, I just don't like it. <laughs> and that's just my preference. But you, new beginners, go get EMA. Don't get in trouble, okay? Life is not fair. <laughs> All right, with that being out of the way, let's get today's class started. Why don't we? <laughs> All right, so we got this hand, okay, from my friend Zilei. And uh, this is going to be our model hand. We named her Angelica Thing. <laughs> Because Zule was like, I'm going to name her Angelica. And I was like, oh, Angelica, because she's a hand. Well, actually, somebody, one of my followers um, 
on the live commented. And then I was like, what is that thing from Adam's family? The hand that was walking? And they said it was name, his name was Thing. So I was like, okay, well, her name can be Thang, Angelica Thang. So Angelica will be working with us today. All right. Now, today's class, we are going to talk about the importance of your eyes. Blink, blink, eyes. Blink with me. Blink, blink, your eyes. What is so important about your eyes? You need to be able to see what is pretty and what is ugly. You need to be able to look at something and say, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look like what the client was going for. Um, and it's going to help you out with your speed. Why? I measure with my eyes. I need you to be able to measure with your eyes. That will cut down a lot of time, okay? When I'm cutting the nails down, that's the whole process. You need to be able to see that each nail has the same length. What I have is a measure it. You should be able to measure with your eyes. Um, your eyes is so important because when it's time for stones, you need to be able to measure to see how to place each stone for it to look pretty. You need to be able to look at the nail and be like, okay, it only requires a little piece of acrylic right here. So I'm only going to get a little bit of acrylic. Your eyes is so important. Okay. You need to see the difference. All right. So I'm going to work with you guys today of the nail tips. Okay. The nail tip box consists of zero to 10. Zero being the biggest, 10 being the smallest nails. All right. Get your pen and paper out. Zero to 10. Normally, pinkies range anywhere from a eight, nine, and 10. Okay. Eight, nine, and 10. Put it for these. These three your ring finger, your middle finger, and your pointer finger. These range between a five, three, four. Okay, so three, four, five. Three, four, five is the range of these, okay? If the people's finger is bigger, of course, the nail size is going to be bigger, and if it's smaller, it's going to be smaller, but the average, okay, is size three, four, five. Thumbs average from zero, one, two. Okay, zero, one, two is a thumb. So pinkies, eight, nine, 10, three, four, five, and zero, one, two. Okay, that's the average. You want to get to a point where I look at this pinky. What did I say? I said between uh, eight, nine, 10. All right, so you should be able to pick up the eight. Boom, it should fit. Boom. I said that these are like between a three, four, five. You should be able to get to a point where you can look at the nail and tell that this is between an eight, nine, 10. What more is bigger than most people? Cause look, it's actually bigger than mine's. So this is looking like an eight. This is looking like a five. This is looking like a four. This is looking like a five. Okay. So memorize that. And how do we glue? Let me see if I can follow these down. Cause these are fake tips. Like, look, it slides, it slides on and off. So, boom, you see that? All right, so did we work on the wrist the other day? Did we work on our wrist, okay? The important of the wrist is not only drilling, but you're gonna see once I start. Juicy, can you bring me some paper towels? Okay. It's not only important when it comes to the drilling, it's important when it comes with the brush, okay? how you're going to be turning your hands all right so when we are gluing the tips on you remember the sizes right we are trying to glue it from this side to this side you want the tip the bottom part to fit from this side to this side yes thank you baby all right. Also, do not hold it down like this. Okay. Do not hold it down like this and do not hold it up like this. It needs to lay on there at a perfect, perfect 
okay right there nice and flat not like this and not like this but just right there lay it on there now remember these tips are more flatter tips i like these because i like the shape in these okay and it needs to go from here to here so from one end of the nail to the other end of the nails okay So what we're gonna do now, let me show you this. Okay guys, so this is your drill, right? These sand bits look like this. This is how they come, they are white, all right? The machines allow you, if you wanna put it all the way down and then you can turn it and tighten it right here or you can up it, okay? This, to make it long, that is normally for long nails when you are fouling the cuticle around the long nails. When we're just doing short, we're gonna bring it all the way down, okay? Remember, hold the customer finger, pinky out, and we're gonna go around. And this is how, you can start with pushing the cuticle back, all right? Which means just pushing this part down, okay? I've gotten to the point where I know how to use my drill and drill their cuticle off. So I just drill that shit off. Um, so pinky out, around, using the tip, using the tip of the drill, okay? The tip part. That's what we use to go around the cuticle, okay? The surface of the nail, we flatten it, okay? So around the cuticle is the tip. The surface, flatten it. And then flatten it. Okay? So around the top, flatten it. I never used this fake hand before. It feels kind of weird. So around the top using the tip and flattening it when we get to this okay around the tip also it is not a back and forth motion okay you it looks like i'm going back and forth okay but i'm only going one direction i'm only going to the left okay when i when i'm going back i'm actually slightly lifting the drill up off of the nail so it looks like that i'm going back and forth but i'm not going back and forth that's another thing too because y'all can't be trying to go this way <laughs> because it's going in reverse and it's gonna like it's gonna kind of like bounce back on the clients and it's gonna hurt them so literally i'm going like this but when when my hand is going back to the right i'm actually slightly lifting it off the nail so you can hear that? If I was going, you would hear that. No, I'm going only left motion. When I'm I'm going back to the right to start, I literally lift it away. All right. So that is prepping. All right. I know you guys are beginners. So if you're a beginner, you can lay it out, okay? You can pick it up. And you see how it fits from one side to the other side, okay? Make sure that it fits one on one side to the other side. Okay, it's a little bit small. So you can simply measure it out. These are also C curve on these hands, so it's a little bit more difficult too. You can measure it out. This is a three. I'm sorry, that's a four. And that's a five again. All right. These nails has a C curve, so it's a little bit more difficult for me too. Um, we're gonna take some glue. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna take the glue. You can put it on the edge of the tip. I prefer to put a dot in the middle and then I let the glue spread out like that. And that's 
some more glue to it. Okay. From one side to the other. My hand is shaking today. I need to eat. So this one can actually be bigger. Also, you guys, doing a fake hand is never the same as doing a real client because every client hand is different nail bed is different this is my first time using this fake hand angelica we're gluing on a plastic or This glue, oh my god, and it's terrible. All right, guys, so I had to get some glue spray because that shit was not trying to stick. Okay, so you see how it's from one side to the one side to the other side, okay, evenly. This is way different than a real nail. Okay. All right. I like to cut with scissors. So the pinky stiletto. The middle and the center, you now, it's important to use your eye again, where the number is, okay? The number centers the middle. So for stiletto, we cut from one center down to the next corner. And we cut down to the next corner. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. Coffin, we bring it in like a ballerina, it's more skinny. All right, all right. Taper square, we can just slightly trim it. And let's say lipstick, we just cut it to the side. All right. What I like to do is I like to take my sandpaper again and we're going to bring it in. And then we're going to file right there. This, this, we're going to file that so that it smooths out with where the glue is at. Remember, pinky is always out and flatten when you get to the surface. When you're up on the cuticle, You're using the tip part. And I like to use the sandpaper to sharpen up my shape. So whatever part that the scissor didn't get, I can get into there. And flatten. I use this a lot. <laughs> Fucking fake it and it's blowing me. <laughs> All right. And the reason why we're filing off the surface of this right here, to remove the oil, any excess oil, okay? And then take some primer of your choice and we're gonna boom 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 all right
primer, right? So you can primer a couple of times, depending on who. Some people primer right away. Some people don't. All right? So remember, let's rewind. What did we learn? 9 and 10. 8, 9, 10. Between these are 3, 4, 5s. Okay? The thumbs are 0, 1, 2. All right. Remember, dip in one side, drain on the other. Use the side that you didn't drain and dip it into your acrylic. Okay? This, I hope you guys practice like I told y'all to. Dip. Okay? As long as there's no clumps and there's no bubbles, we're going to put it at the top. Okay? With, and we're going to slightly let go. We're going to drop it at the door. That means we're going to let go at the tip and we're going to let go. Okay, dip it in, clean off the brush. You saw how when I dropped it down, and we're gonna bring it down. But I'd hurry up because that should dry quick just now. All right, we're gonna do that again. So pick up, drop it at the door, let it go, let it go. Hold the customer hand down so allow the acrylic to drip down. And you're going to pat it. You pat with the body of the brush, okay? The body of the brush is to pat to maneuver. The tip of the brush is really strong, okay? So touch up that. For the tip... You see, the only time I use the tip of the brush is when I want to knock something off. Especially when I'm doing ombre, you can use the tip of the brush. If you are maneuvering, you can use the body of the brush. Take the tip if we need more up here. Clean off the brush, dip it again, backhand it. Okay. How can you check to see if your acrylic is even? When you're looking at this angle... You can't see that your acrylic is even, but if you turn it to the side, you can see the humps that it needs, okay? You can see where it's missing. You see that? Like, I turn it to the side, it's a whole different angle. And you can see that I can use a little bit more there. You can't see from the top angle. You see that? But as soon as you turn it to the side, it's a different ball game. All right. Now, another method you can do is the halfway. You can drop it halfway here instead of the cuticle. Drop it. Clean your brush and use the body of the brush to maneuver. See? Use the body of the brush to maneuver. You don't use the tip until you get to the end. Once you get to the end, boom, the tip can use be used to cut it off. The tip of the brush is really strong. Pada, okay? You can use this technique if you're not ready for the one ball so that it looks like a fill. And now we can do the top. Drop it. Use the body of the brush to maneuver it. Only time we use the tip is when we're ready to cut excess off. See that? Yeah. See, only time I'm using the tip is when I'm trying to smooth it out. So, look, when we look at the top, we can't tell. Must turn it to the side. And we see that it's a little bit thinner right here, and we can use some. Build a relationship with your brush, y'all. Flip. Okay. Build a relationship with your brush. Your brush, you should know if it needs a little bit right here. You should build. A, you should know that your brush, you should only go get a little bit. Turn it. Okay. That 
is your relationship with your brush. You should be able to use your eye to eyeball how much acrylic is needed. Okay? So, I drop it. I let go slowly. Clean the brush. Pat it with the body. Hold the client's finger down so that your acrylic can actually maneuver. Okay? So it can flow down, okay? All right, I see that I'm missing some on that corner. I'm only gonna go get a little bit that's gonna fit that corner. Boom, with the tip, maneuver, and then pull. Don't keep doing this. Don't keep fucking brushing, okay? Get a little bit, maneuver it to where you, it needs to be, and then pull down. Use the, use the tip of the brush to clean around the edges like that, okay? Remember, the tip of the brush is really strong, okay? It will ruin everything. If you accidentally poke it like this, it will poke a hole. Now for the bottom, look what I need. Turn my brush to the side, clean it, pull it up. Use the tip of the brush if I need to cut off some excess. excess. Voila. Turn it to the side. That's when you can see what part is that that you're missing. Okay, you can't tell from this way. This way it looks smooth. You gotta turn it to the side. I'm not gonna show y'all how to do ombre and all that stuff first. We need to get the acrylic clumps together first, okay? That's gonna be a whole nother session. So drop it at the dough, let it go, clean your brush. Pat, 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 pat with the center of your brush. Hold the finger down so the acrylic can maneuver down as you are patting. clean brush it up now when i'm brushing up i'm brushing with the tip of the brush you see that the tip of the brush but very lightly be careful don't do it too hard because it's going to knock all the acrylic over all right so dip in strain one side and use the straight side that wasn't strained dip it in drop it at the dough drop it at the dough hold the hand down and pat it down with the belly of your brush the belly only use the tip for when you want to swipe it off or clean around the cuticle so i need you to practice you don't even need a hand you can even get a tip okay you can hold a plastic tip and practice with this okay Drop it at the dough. Use the belly of the brush. Bring it down. Okay. Once you get to the bottom, that's when you can use, boom, the tip of the brush. All right. So homework. Oh, fuck. Did I do it? all of that? off? Okay. You saw it. So homework. All right. So homework. The lighting looks freaking terrible in here. It makes me look all fucking blotchy. <laughs> Homework for this week is getting that consistency, okay? Dropping it at the door, learning how to use your brush. The belly of the brush is to maneuver. The tip is to cut around the edges or to swipe something off, okay? Angles of looking at the nails, looking at the top, you can't tell if it's even. Checking the sides, all right? Checking the sides. We are not going to learn how to shape and stuff today. Also, class, what did we learn? Pinkies are normally a size 8 through a 10. These three fingers are normally a 3, 4, 5. Sometimes 6. These are normally 2, 1, 0. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, no, 0, 1, 2. Okay. And your nail case should have all the numbers. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, so keep practicing. Get somebody finger and be like, hmm, I think that finger's a five. Pick up a five. 
Place it against from one side to the other. See if it's a five. Make sure you're not, you're not gluing that nail tip too high or too low, not too bent, okay? But a nice flat surface. Practice on your consistency, all right? Thank you guys for tuning in today's class. Next week, we will work on more, but I need you guys to get the consistency down. I need you guys to get the nail tip on there and get it on there correctly. And then we can work on shaping next week. Anyways, thank you guys so much. We made it to a million motherfuckers. <laughs> and um, if you are taking this seriously, then, you know, Make sure you get out there, you get your books, and you go take your classes. There's a lot more to it. It's been so long. <laughs> it's been so long. Um, you don't really get to learn all of this stuff in school, how to do nails. It's really just the basics, and you have to learn more about the books. So if you want to go that route. Um, as far as me, I love you guys. Uh, thank you much, so much for your support and everything else. And... Um, I will see you guys next week, okay? Make sure you guys practice on those wrists because you saw I almost tore this little hand up. Now, remember that pinky was still out even when I'm brushing. That pinky is out. The pinky is always out. The pinky is always out. That pinky is always out. Drilling. Remember what we learned today? The top, the tip part is for around the cuticles and then flatten. But see, when I'm flatten, you see, when I'm going around, look at that wrist. That wrist is rising in order for it to go around and turn this way without turning the customer. Then when I get to the middle part, my wrist is lowering. It's lowering like this to getting it flat. So around and then lower. So keep practice on the wrist. Practice around the cuticle. All right, love you guys. Mwah, mwah, 